The following presentation is rated TVPG. For an in-depth look at my best friend's wedding, Showtime takes you behind the scenes. The pleasure of your company is requested at my best friend's wedding. Starring Julia Roberts, Dermot Mulroney, Cameron Diaz, and Rupert Everett. Cheers. Well, the character that I play, she's a food critic. She's very devoted to her career. She has this best friend that she's had forever. And, um, and she discovers that he's getting married, and so that's how the story takes off. He was in love with me every day for nine years. Me? <laughs> I can see why. Look, she has known him for, what, like five seconds? I can't lose him, George. I'm a busy girl. I've got exactly four days to break up a wedding, steal the bride's fella, and I haven't one clue how to do it. I think it's a pretty simple story. Huh. Maybe it's not that simple. It's, it's about this friendship and a new love relationship and how those two relationships conflict. Oh, you know, I've never had a sister. All I've heard is, is Julianne this and Julianne that. Michael and I were a wrong fit right from the start. He said that too. Kim, you can't help but to feel that they're, they're, she's being left out a little okay. bit. The only fear she really has is you. So this means that I have four days to make you my new best friend and be my maid of honor. What? Why not? You're practically the best man anyway. I just asked myself, what would Lucy Ricardo do in this situation? She goes into scheme mode, um, but I don't think it's her forte, and she sort of schemes the way Lucy Ricardo schemes, where all of her plans are thwarted left and right, and she just makes a mess of everything. Who's that guy? Jo it's a George. George. <laughs> hey, congratulations. congratulations. What? I told him, George, <laughs> if we're engaged, why well, be ashamed of it, right? Something wrong. It's just a big surprise. We thought you were a lesbian. Ah! George is um, sort of her best friend, second in command. He's her editor, someone that she works with, someone that, you know, lives in New York where she lives. I come to comfort her, thinking maybe I'll take her back to New York or something like that. Instead, she tells him that she's married, getting married to me, at which point I have to act like I'm her fiance. But I'm sort of infuriated by this, and I decide to humiliate her. Underplay. Got it. Hey! I'm Jules' fiance, George. <laughs> Just in town for a quick pre-conjugal visit, if you catch my drift. <laughs> we have to talk about George. You were jealous? Crazy jealous. Personally, I think Mr. Michael's marrying the wrong girl. There, there's some trouble because she wants one thing and Michael may want another and Kimberly definitely wants one thing. Julianne is trying to take that wrench and just ram it in the gears and the hilarity ensues. God, I've got it. I've got it all figured out. My Best Friend's Wedding was brought to the screen by P.J. Hogan, the director of Muriel's Wedding, and was produced by Jerry Zucker and Ron Bass. Here we go, guys. Chicago played host to My Best Friend's Wedding, and crowds gathered to watch as the cast and crew filmed at some of the city's leading landmarks. There's chases and scenes all over Chicago. I'd, I'd always hoped to work in Chicago because I went to school at Northwestern and I knew the city a little bit, but this is, uh, this is the way to go. I love shooting in Chicago. These incredible buildings. It's a Chicago skyline. It's like a uh, showroom for the world's great architects. And they take the opportunity to show off. All right, yes. let's try a rehearsal. And then I go like this, and I go, here we go. <laughs> it's really hard to find an interesting, uh, good, original comedy. So this one was very appealing to me. You're going to humiliate me, aren't you? Only if I can. Rupert Everett is just one of the funniest people on the planet, you know. It's very difficult, ultimately, to act with Rupert because I'm not really supposed to be laughing at all the things that he's telling me, and it's incredibly hard not to. A lot of people don't know who Rupert is, so there's an element of surprise about his performance. Action! <laughs> <laughs> It all started with Ron Bass, one of the, the great and prolific writers in, in Hollywood. And I read the script right away. Actually, my wife read it first and said, Jerry, you have to read this script right now. I attended the wedding of one of my best friends, a brilliant film editor named David Brenner in Chicago. And I said, what a great thing. We're all just here to celebrate. And then this one Lucy Ricardo figure gets dropped down in the middle of all that simplicity, happiness, sweetness, and light. It seemed like a perfect conflict for comedy. Oh, my 
my God, it's the bride and the woman she'll never live up to. <laughs> While the White Sox took on the Oakland A's on the field, Julianne scored big points with the home team. Now remember, it is the duty of the best man to dance with the maid of honor. You can't dance. When did you learn how to dance? I've got moves you've never seen. <laughs> You're an imposter. What did you do with my best friend? Huh? I'm still your best friend. Just haven't seen you for a while. <laughs> Julia is witty, intelligent, and beautiful. Let's just start again. Don't cut. <laughs> when I met her, I realized that that, that, that that is her. It's not something she just she, that, that she fakes. I thought if I could get who Julia Roberts is, unadulterated Julia Roberts, on film in this role, it will be a knockout. And I'll add one more thing to that. She's funny between takes. We're listening in our earphones, you know, and we can still hear the patter while we're waiting to reset the scene. And she's making jokes and making the crew and everybody laugh between takes. I think we should all take a little group therapy moment. <laughs> Join hands. I like doing comedy, you know, enjoy it. And when things go well, it's not like, oh, well, we're all so jaded and they've gone well before. It's that you're legitimately excited that you've done something that's effective, whether it be funny or sad or or whatever you're going for. I'm going to take Cameron from here. It's not a problem. We have the scene where Julia's character, Julianne, is supposed to um, fall while she's wearing this dress that's too tight for her. Here we go. Space. Parker? Our first scene our first take, um, Julia started to take a step off, <laughs> step off of the pedestal she's standing on. Nobody knew that this was going to happen. We were laughing so hard. We were just completely, I just almost died. I was so glad I didn't get hurt that it actually was um, an accident, a total accident. It was hilarious and it had us laughing on the set forever. Hey, quiet, everybody. We're just about set here. Because okay, I'll just check. Tell you what, we're going to go straight in on this. Picture will be up. Well, I think one of, the, one of the real signature scenes in the movie is this crazy scene that takes place in this Crab House restaurant. Very Hogan-esque scene, I think. If anyone's seen Muriel's Wedding, this one has a lot of that kind of like, very believable but completely bizarre. And uh, Rupert just turned in a tour de force uh, performance in that scene. George is a fairly quiet, introverted man who gets put into a situation and suddenly becomes a kind of demon. Parker? How did you and Julianne meet? It's a very romantic story. Would you like to tell it, Sweepy? No, it's private. Hmm. Not anymore. <laughs> I first met Julianne <laughs> in a mental institution. Julianne was there visiting some French chef. She'd sent insane with a bad review. And I was there visiting Dion Warwick. Dion Warwick? Well, yes, he thought he was Dion Warwick. You see, there again, I have to sit next to Rupert as he's doing this hilarious routine at the Crab House and not laugh. Uh, I, I bet Julia $100 on the first take that she couldn't get through it without laughing. But I won. Welcome in my head and out. While wondering what dress to wear now. <laughs> I say a little prep for you. Forever and ever, you <laughs> stay in my heart. And I will love you forever and ever. You never will part. Oh, how I love you together forever. That's, That's how it must be to live without you. Would only be in heartbreak for me. <laughs> I love music. I really wanted that in the film. I really wanted the joy and love that the music brings. I went to go see Muriel's wedding with my sister. It was so beautifully executed and so well done. And I think that PJ has an amazing capacity for detail. I think that his sense of humor is vast and precise and that he really sort of has a clear idea of how he wants things to go. It could be as superbly funny. I sort of like the fact that he's, you know, especially in America, considered rather new. And so he still has that sort of um, energy that I have for, you know, making movies. 
Okay, that's a cut. It's find life so funny that if you, you observe and take note, uh, it's in the details. My relationship with PJ started off on a very untrustworthy footing. I had lunch with PJ and Julia. They were both talking about Muriel's wedding. I just lied right to his face. Yeah, I love the movie. I hadn't seen it. Where'd you find this place? The doorman told me about it. And I think I hear Tom Jones calling you. Ah. In the scene in the karaoke bar, Julian has just gotten to town, and we go out and have a, have a good time. You begin to see how the dynamics are unfolding. Uh, give it up, folks, please, for the vocal stylings of Miss Kimberly Wallace. Uh -huh. Cameron's character, Kimmy, tries to sing, but man, whew, she can't sing. Oh, and what I think's really funny in that scene is that you have two totally different perspectives of what's happening, and it's just horrendous. Now, this doesn't affect my character at all because I see right through it to, you know, to, to the woman I love. I got both my best girls in the same room. Where, where did the mic go? Folks, thirsty? Uh, margarita. margarita. Oh, blended oh, no She salt. wants it straight up. There's two romances going on. You know, there's this friendship. You fall in love with that relationship as well. Those two romances share a common link, and that's Michael. Michael and Julianne, I think, have a sort of unique relationship where it has sort of crossed all the lines that friendship shouldn't cross. I've seen you a lot more naked than that. They're always very attracted to one another, but know the pitfalls of that, so just remain the best of friends. And I think the reason why the boat is particularly special is because it's the first time that you see Michael and Julianne entirely alone, just to talk. We got to shoot one of the scenes on this Skyline tour boat in the Chicago River. Looking up at all these buildings just slowly moving um, by you, I just thought it was a beautiful place to set a scene. You know, it's a nice cruise for the day. Okay, and roll sound rolling. Is your dance card filled? Oh, I have to check. I have it on power book these days. I really enjoy acting with Dermot Mulroney, and in a scene like that, he makes my job incredibly easy in the way that he performs his half of the scene. You know, PJ was like saying, oh, that was a great scene, thank you. I said, thank Dermot, you know, I didn't have to do anything, you know. That was great. That's sort of a luxury that I've had with all the actors that I've worked with on this movie. It just feels like one of those movies where everybody's in the right spot, in the right time in their life and in the right character. I think that's when you, when you get a good movie is when people are where they belong at that time in their life. Oh, I didn't like her. I didn't have to hate her, I'd adore her. Do you really love him? Or is this just about winning? The interesting thing about this movie is that as you get to know these people better and become more in touch with, you know, who they really are and how they really feel about one another, you keep changing your mind a little bit about what you think should happen, what you want to happen. And then I'm constantly saying to, you know, Dermot, like Kitty Munson, you know, there's still time, you still think about it, you know. I, I, I realize this comes at a very inopportune time. Marry me. Finding love and being loved is one of the most difficult things. And I think romantic comedies uh, uh, shed light on, on, on that search. Stay tuned. Friends and Lovers Night is just getting started. Up next, Julia Roberts and Cameron Diaz star in the blockbuster romantic comedy, My Best Friend's Wedding. Then stick around for the premiere of the Showtime miniseries that picks up where the acclaimed PBS series left off. Armistead Maupin's More Tales of the City, Part 1.